Yeah, so this is the, the full-scale version of our aircraft that we've already done a thousand test flights on. Um, so we're really excited to be bringing it here to New York, obviously, for our public debut. So, Paul, paint the picture for us. Assuming I don't have a, a vertiport in my backyard, this is Emily, how do I get from my home in the Bay Area suburbs to San Francisco on any given day? Yeah, so folks sometimes think about this as a sort of Jetsons future where everyone will have one of these parked on the tops of their rooftop or in their driveway. That's really not how we think about it. We really design this aircraft for aerial ride sharing. So think like Tesla meets Uber for the air. So this is an aircraft that will be an on-demand service and we've already got opportunities to basically tie together the ground transportation to and from your flight where we're flying the long distance high value portion of the trip. So now, like Reid Hoffman, who's sponsoring your SPAC, is going to be on Bloomberg Tech later today. He's called this Uber meets Tesla in the air. Sorry. Uh, and, and we've all been stuck in traffic. Imagine an air taxi whisking us away. But how much of a sliver do you, of, of that traffic do you, do you imagine really cutting down? How will Joby really reinvent transportation and scale this up? Yeah, so we designed this aircraft to really be suitable for any trip between 5 and 150 miles. So it's not just trips inside of cities. Sometimes this category is called UAM, and we don't really love that. We think about it as not only the trips inside of cities, but also connecting cities to suburbs, or in some cases, cities to nearby cities. So this is really a new mode of regional transportation um, that we think can be safer than driving on the ground, certainly faster, and then just as affordable as ride sharing today. Paul, it's Guy. Talk um, about the affordability. The I know you're, you're thinking about... Uh, go ahead, Guy. Sorry, let me jump in. Um, Paul, Paul, where are the challenges? You've got, you've got a certification challenge, you've got a scaling challenge, uh, and then you've got a kind of sky ports, where are you going to build these sort of things challenge as well. Can you kind of walk me through how you're going to solve all of those uh, and which ones represent the biggest challenges you're going to face going forward? Sure. So this is a team that's already been working on this problem for the greater part of a decade. So we're certainly not new to the challenges that this industry faces. And I think what we've shown is that the technology is ready. The aircraft is performing as exactly as we intended, 150 miles on a single charge with a noise profile that's as much as 100 times quieter than helicopters today. We think both of those are really important in terms of delivering a service. But you're right, there are other challenges as well, certainly certification and scaling up manufacturing and service. And frankly, the one of the exciting things about today is it's really an opportunity for the company to pivot from a research and development focused organization to one that's squarely focused on commercialization, meaning executing on the certification plan with the FAA, showing that we can repeatedly produce these aircraft at scale, and then third and finally laying the groundwork for certification. In terms of that certification, I, I've heard you talk about this before. You sound pretty positive. My question is... How much weight is the FAA going to add? They are clearly going to be cautious about certifying these aircraft. You talk about a 150-mile range. Do you think the FAA is going to put extra weight into the aircraft, and do you think that's going to affect performance? So we've been in conversations with the FAA for a number of years and in a formal certification process for two already. So the certification challenge isn't one that's brand new to this company. Um, we actually received a really important milestone in that effort just last year with our receipt from, with, from the FAA of what's called a G1 issue paper. So this is the sort of roadmap, the series of tests that we need to do at the component level and then at the vehicle level to prove the safety of the aircraft and get type certification. So we now know exactly what we need to do. It's just a matter of doing it. So I don't expect that there's going to be any further hiccups in the process. It's really just about our own execution. Now, Paul, we seem to be one step closer to point-to-point -point space travel with the successes we've seen from Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic on these short trips to space. Elon Musk has this vision of, you know, commercial hypersonic, super fast travel, New York to Shanghai in 40 minutes. What do you think about visions like that? So it's really exciting to see a bunch of big, ambitious industries sort of being taken on in new ways. Um, and I think there are sort of interesting analogies to some of the work that's happened in ground EV with electrification of vehicles, certainly some of the things that are happening in space, and some of the work that we're doing here. So in all of those cases, the incumbent players really were delivering incremental innovation for a long time. And we have, an, have, have had an opportunity through deep vertical integration to really do something that's different than traditional aerospace has done. And we think that, frankly, this is like a problem that startups are well equipped to solve. 
It certainly takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of capital, but we're allowed, to, we can sort of think about it in a really different way than other folks. And I think that that's going to position us well as we kind of go into this next stage of the company and commercialization. So who's going to be taking the first commercial flights? Are you going to be running auctions as well? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Who's going to be taking the first commercial flights? Blue Origin ran an auction and the seat went for $28 million. I imagine you're taking a different approach since the goal is affordability. Yeah, so we've always designed the aircraft to not be something that's exclusively for the wealthy in the way that helicopters, say, are today. So everything about the aircraft, the speed, the capacity, the charge time to really minimize the amount of time that the aircraft spends on the ground was all to get to a price point that started affordable and could get increasingly affordable over time. So first year of launch, think about it as the cost of an Uber Black, and then by only the second or third year of launch, really the cost of an Uber X. So this is something that we think can be affordable and accessible to large numbers of people. Paul, what is the, you, you mentioned the charging time. What is the turnaround time of the aircraft? So on a single 25 mile trip, we can charge back the energy that we use in just five to six minutes, basically the time it takes to load and unload passengers on the other side. That was actually one of the real challenges in terms of the battery system and the powertrain on this aircraft that we've had a big team working on for a long time. So we're really pleased that we were able to get that because it's really the utilization of the aircraft that drives the underlying economics and allows us to charge the right price point that is, as I said, affordable, accessible to lots of people. Now, you've been working on this, Paul, since 2009. The fleet won't be you know, fully ready for a couple more years. Why SPAC now? And, and what's going to happen between now and commercial flights? Why is it going to take so long? Well, look, building a new aircraft and certifying a brand new aircraft, that's a hard challenge. And this team has been at it for a really long time. Um, I think the, the decision to go public now was really because we felt we were ready. The technology was ready, the path through certification was increasingly clear, and we saw this as an opportunity to obviously raise capital to fund the next stages of development. And that's really simple. It's three things. Executing on certification, showing that we can repeatedly produce these aircraft at volume, and then third and finally laying the groundwork for initial commercial launch. And we've got a number of milestones over the, over the next six quarters that are really geared to each of those three goals.